We're continuing our coordinate descent calculation for Adaboost. And again, coordinate descent is this procedure where uh, you alternate steps between choosing an optimal direction and walking an optimal distance in that direction. And so um, in the last video, we derived which direction we want to walk in, and that's the direction in that formula right there. And then in this video, we're going to work on doing that line search. Okay, so I want you to think about doing a line search along direction JT so that you'll minimize the objective R train. Okay, so you start from lambda T, you start from where you, where you got to, and then you're gonna walk a distance alpha in that direction so that you minimize the objective. Okay, so that's the calculation we're gonna do in this video, and there's some, there's some interesting stuff that happens um, during this calculation. Okay, so let's do it. So we're gonna take the derivative of R train and set it equal to zero. Okay, and it's going to, that derivative is going to equal zero uh, at, sorry, at um, lambda t plus alpha, t, alpha ejt. Okay, so we're going to walk a distance alpha in the ejt direction where jt is the direction that we derived in the last video. Okay, so dd alpha and set that guy equal to zero at the point alpha t. Okay, so alpha t is how far we're going to go. So let's actually write that out. So zero equals, okay. And then it's dd alpha, one over n sum over i, e to the negative, and then it's m lambda i, but here it's uh, m times lambda t plus alpha e j t. And then again, take the ith component. Okay, so this equals, and let's pull out this, uh, this guy here, send that derivative in, dd alpha, um, I can actually write this out to make my life easier next time. So m lambda t i minus alpha. And then this is m i j t because it's again, um, you know, m times e j t, which looks at the uh, j t column of m. And then this says take this, this index says take the i th component. Um, and so you're just looking at that ijt entry of matrix M. Okay, cool. All right. So now let's go and actually take that derivative. And the only thing that comes down is this mijt right there. Just like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a trick, which is to separate this sum into two, uh, two different groups, okay? So um, I'll start, the, the, the first group is the points where mij equals one, and the other are the points where mij equals minus one, because remember, m is a binary matrix. Everything is either plus or minus one. All right, so let's, uh, let's bring that all out. So I'm gonna take this negative sign out first. So I have negative one over n, sum over, and then this is just the i such that m i j t equals one, okay? It's just those specific data points where m i j t equals one. Okay, and then I'm just gonna rewrite the sum. There's, there's nothing fancy here, just copying it. Okay, and then minus and I need the other one. One over n, sum over i, such that m i j t equals minus one. Cool. 
So it's Mijt e to the negative and this i, okay, minus alpha Mijt, just enough room, and evaluated alpha t. Cool, now I'm setting everything here to zero, right? This is all equal to zero. So actually the negative signs, I don't need them. And the one over n's, they don't, I don't need them either because they're, you know, just, it's all equal to zero anyway. So hey, so I can divide by those happily. All right, cool. So now I can rewrite this in a much simpler way, actually. So this equals, okay. Um, this equals here, sum over i, such that mijt equals one. And now mijt here is just one, right? This thing is just one for this sum. So I'm just gonna, it's just gonna be one. So I'm not gonna even put it in there. So I have e to the negative m lambda t i, and then this is minus alpha because again, mij t is just one for this set of observations. Okay, and then I have here, okay, plus, oh, actually it's minus because mijt equals minus one. Okay, so sorry, that was a plus and this was a minus, so I just, I brought it over to the other side. Okay, there we go. Minus. Okay, then this is e to the negative and then it's the same thing again. plus alpha. By the way, these um these two sums, these 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 two sets of uh, observations are actually kind of meaningful because um the first group, the ones where MIJT is one, those are the ones where we classify our JT gets them correct. And the other sum, that's for points where the weak classifier messed them up. Okay, so I can actually write this um, actually a little bit more nicely even. So I can actually write this as being e times e to the negative alpha. And I can write this one as being times e to the positive alpha. Okay, cool. So now I can actually bring that out. I can actually bring these terms out. So this is e to the negative alpha times this sum okay minus and then this is e to the positive alpha sum All right, I don't know why I'm carrying over that at alpha t now. I can just plop that in. This is at alpha t. Cool. Okay, so now all of this stuff has to equal zero. Just to remind you, it all equals zero. So I'm just going to define something that's rather convenient for me. I'm gonna divide both terms. I'm, I'm just gonna divide this whole expression by a norm, our normalization factor ZT. And I can do that just because I can multiply it by anything and it's still zero. Okay, so now I want to define something. And in particular, I want to define this quantity right here as DTI. This is the same DTI as in the exposition for Adaboost that we had uh, before. Okay, so we're gonna define DTI as being e to the negative 
m times lambda t i divided by this normalization factor that makes sure all the weight vectors add up to one in our discrete probability distribution over the training examples. And as you see, that they are e to the something or other, so they can never be negative. They're always non-negative, and so they're always um, so they can always be a, prob a discrete probability distribution. Okay, cool. So then, from there, I have a much nicer expression. Let's go back to my other color if I can remember what it was. So I'm at here zero equals, and then it's e to the negative alpha t sum over i such that mijt is one. So over all the points that the GT classifier classified correctly. And this is dti, okay, plus, or sorry, that one's a minus, e to the alpha t sum over all the other i, the ones that the classifier got incorrect of the weights for, for those, okay? So if you think about it, um, this set over here, this set, that is the total weight for all the correctly classified points. So I'm going to call those D plus. This is the total weight from the weight vector for the correctly classified points. And then this guy, and, and this guy is called D minus, and it's the total weight or the incorrect points. Okay, so we're in very good shape here. Um, so let me see if I can just do this here. So let me do it here. Okay, and bring us back to our usual color. So I have zero equals e to the negative alpha t d plus minus e to the alpha t d minus. Okay, now we're in good shape. So I have here e to the alpha t d minus equals e to the negative alpha t d plus. Okay, so now I have, um, I'll, I'll do it this way, d plus over d minus equals e to the alpha t over e to the negative alpha t. This is e to the alpha, e to the two alpha t. Okay, so finally, what I end up with at the very bottom of the screen, completely out of room, is that alpha t equals one half log of d plus over d minus. Okay, now there's one more thing I wanna tell you, which is that um, do it over here because I really want to be able to sort of put a big box around it and say, hey, we've got the formula one half log of okay um, d plus over d minus okay and now since zt you know was the normalization you know since because these d's are normalized. Uh, d plus um, plus d minus equals 1, okay, which means that d plus equals 1 minus d minus. So I can actually write that alpha t equals 1 half log 1 minus d minus over 
D minus. Okay, so this is this is where I wanted to get to. This is the formula that I wanted because um, it should look familiar. So D minus is actually the the total weight of the misclassified points. It's actually the weighted misclassification error. That's what D minus is. So I'll write here that this is the the weighted misclassification error because it's the sum of the weights of the misclassified points at iteration uh, t. Okay, so we end up with a, this formula, which is one half log of one minus that misclassification error over that misclassification error, which is exactly the formula that appears in Adaboost. So that's a really nice way to sort of derive that mysterious formula that, um, that Adaboost has in it. Okay, so I just wanna review a little bit what we've done. Um, so when we were doing this line search, we started off by uh, first finding out which direction to travel in, which is uh, this one over here. Okay. And then we um, then went and did the line search in that direction and ended up with the formula that's right here, which is the formula for the weighted, the formula that involves the weighted misclassification error that Adaboost uses. So that's how far we want to travel in direction JT. There you go.